Hello, and welcome to another episode of Unworthy History. We're going to bring you some actual history on this channel today. Today I'm going to be reading a story from this book right here, Indian Depredations in Texas, published by J.W. Wilbarger back in 1889. The story today takes place in San Saba County, and the two men involved, named Miller and Morell, uh, they actually resided in McCulloch County, uh, just west of San Saba County. In the spring of 1867, Miller and Morell loaded their wagon with corn and went to a mill about 30 miles distant to get it ground. On their way back, when crossing the valley of a small creek called Brady, they were attacked by a party of Indians on foot, who suddenly rushed out upon them from a dense thicket near the roadside. The two men in the wagon, seeing the great odds against them and having no arms but six shooters, put the lash of their horses and dashed down a steep, rocky hill. The jolting of the wagon caused Miller's six-shooter to fall out of the scabbard, and one of the foremost Indians snatched it up and emptied its contents at him, but without effect. They then rushed furiously upon the wagon, using their bows, arrows, and spears, as they had no firearms. Miller and Morell used their pistol with deadly effect. Whilst some of the Indians were trying to spear them or shoot them with arrows, others endeavored to stop the wagon by throwing large stones in front of the wheels. In this manner, the fight continued for some time, until Morell succeeded in killing another Indian with the last cartridge in his six-shooter, which caused them all to fall back temporarily once more. Seizing the opportunity, the men cut loose one of the best horses from the harness, mounted him, and fled to a dense thicket nearby. Finding it was impossible to enter it on horseback, they dismounted and went in on foot and secreted themselves in the thickest brush they could find. The Indians came up, took the horse, but did not venture into the thicket. During the fight, Miller received 27 and Morell 21 wounds. That none of these wounds were fatal can only be accounted for by the fact that when the Indians attacked the wagon, a drizzling rain was falling, which slackened their bowstrings, rendering it impossible to send arrows with much force. The Indians returned to the wagon, emptied the cornmeal in the road, took all the horses, and left for parts unknown. The two wounded men suffered terribly for want of water, and as soon as they were satisfied the Indians had gone, Morell, who was not quite so badly hurt as his companion, crawled to a creek nearby, and after he had slaked his own thirst, he pulled off one of his boots, filled it with water, and with great difficulty managed to carry it back to where he had left Miller, thereby no doubt saving his life. Miller and Morell, not reaching home at the time they were expected, a party went out to look for them. When found, they were in a terrible condition. They were unable to walk, and their clothes were stiffened with clotted blood. They were taken home, and both eventually recovered from their numerous wounds. These men lived in McCulloch County. Uh, so that's the end of uh, this story right here. So really just a short uh, story about an attack on uh, these two men that fortunately survived. Uh, but not without receiving about 20 wounds or more each uh, from arrows and spears. So if you want to see more episodes like this, then be sure to like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time on Unworthy History.